the objectives of the project really were for the Transport Systems Catapult to lead this activity, work with Oxford University and a number of other partners to develop a vehicle that could be trialled in an area like Milton Keynes. Here is uh, our vehicle um, and it's an autonomous vehicle and it's powered by some software we're calling Selenium and that's a suite of software that answers three questions. Where am I? What's around me? And what should I do next? And it does that by connecting and having data fed from a few types of sensors. We have cameras around the vehicle, uh, some of them stereo, some of them mono, that feed images into the computer at the back and also some laser. And then that gets passed on so I know where the vehicle is by processing memory, so it has memories of what the world looks like. And then it says, well, what are the things around me? Are they people? Are they vehicles? Are they some unknown objects? And then having where am I and what's around me in its mind, it can decide what to do next. And then it sends those signals down to the vehicle that says, set the speed to this, turn the wheel to this, and then one twentieth of a second later does the whole thing again. And there's another machine in there that's spending its whole time trying to prevent autonomy. So that's the machine that has to be convinced to let the vehicle become and stay autonomous. And so every one fiftieth of a second it's trying to shut the machine down and bring it to a smooth halt. And so there's this tension between the computers inside there that I think is important for safety. This is an interesting trial that we're doing here in demonstration with the Transport Systems Catapult. I mean, it was sort of their vision to say, well, yes, of course, autonomy on the roads. But what about autonomy in a shared space through subways in wide pavements where you might have people with mobility concerns who would want to have a vehicle carrying them around? How would the public interact with that? So I think this is a nice axis. It's part of the story of autonomy. Part of the role of the Transport Systems Catapult is to look at the research that's going on, both from an industrial point of view but an academic point of view. Point of view as well and how that's going to then influence industry. Part of that role then gives us the uh, ability to help work with government to look at future legislation requirements and future operating models and how the UK could benefit from it. The first uh, area of, of benefit really is, is around safety and we look at safety that can be deployed now, so something that might be able to break and help me um, it, on the motorway for example, then I want to have that technology available. As that technology develops and um, we're talking about other benefits then um, I think things like the efficiency of the vehicles themselves, how they operate, um, but also hopefully the environmental benefits, but also then the, the focus on things like mobility as a service. And probably in, in the space of maybe 10 years we can see vehicles that will be capable of self-driving. To refer to driverless cars is probably a different matter where we're talking about vehicles that don't have any occupants on the roads. If you were to say decades away I think that would be probably quite realistic. It's not just about the technology, it's about regulation and legislation, standards, insurance and probably just as importantly public perception and, and trust and, and awareness. I think we're going to have vehicles that show ever increasing degrees of autonomy. I think it's going to be a long time before we have a vehicle that needs no steering wheel and can take you from anywhere to anywhere else whatever the weather, any time of day. That's a long time. But very soon, you'll start to have vehicles that can operate in smaller areas as mobility of the service. And I think that was part of the vision of what the Transport Catapult wanted to do, is to say, look, pick something like Milton Keynes and show how that could be a possibility. If we look at the work that's going on around the world, there are quite a lot of other driverless shuttle vehicle type um, trials taking place as well. I think as far as the UK is concerned, it's right up there. One of the reasons for that is because we've got a fantastic research base. So a lot of the universities, Oxford University is a good example, have got some really, really good research going into the technology that's required for it. And that's not just in the development of control systems, but it's also in things like the human factors requirements uh, within a program like this. There's a lot of skills within the UK, certainly from an automotive point of view, uh, for developing vehicles like this and pushing this part of the industry forwards. We've seen engagement you know, across the board. People are getting used to the thing. I've really enjoyed seeing people interacting it, you know, when we're doing our trials. And of course, from all of this, we're learning from those interactions about how people react and move around the vehicle as it moves through a confined space in a city. And, and that's interesting as, as part of our endeavour. You know, if I look at the next generation of children at school today, um, they'll have that option, I think, you know, they'll be able to take their driving test, get into a car and drive it, and I think at some point in the future they'll be able to get into a driverless car. Their children, on the other hand, might not even have that option. They might get into a car that is only driverless, and they might not need to take their driving test to, uh, to get onto the roads.